Teardown time. This is the DeWalt DCS355 uh, cordless oscillating multi-tool. Uh, the reason I'm tearing this one down is it failed uh, somewhat prematurely. did not get good uh, service life out of this. You press the uh, po power button and uh, just nothing happens. So something's going to miss. Let's uh, tear it apart and see uh, why it broke. Well, I ever do a teardown video and it just sort of shows its problem right off the be beginning. Um, Looks like the uh, terminal that goes to the battery pack is fatigued out and it's, it's broken off in one of the leads here. And I suspect if I reattach that, uh, this tool will uh, pop right back into service. Well, it won't actually since I bought a replacement already. But uh, I guess this will turn into a, a teardown video uh, for a new use for two multi oscillating tools. Um, that's frustrating. That was a few hundred dollars to replace the tool just because of a, a simple uh, failure of the uh, connector. Um, I Put a battery back on the assembly. If I touch this lead back on, uh, the tool will start right back up. So, uh, an unfortunate uh, end to this piece of equipment because it was such a simple failure, but I've already replaced it. Uh, let's see, uh, in terms of what we can tear down further, uh, electronics are all encapsulated in potting compound. This makes a lot of sense in harsh environments. Uh, you much, you get much better service life when you do this, keep the uh, environmental contaminants out of the electronics. Makes the teardown view a little bit more tricky. Um, of course, the motor here, and then the mechanical end here, which does the oscillating function. Um, let's see what we can uh, gather as we tear this tool down further. Okay, so the electronics has lots of leads coming out. There's a small wire here to a little work light. Uh, that one's not so interesting, but you then count three wires here on the motor assembly, and then uh, another uh, four wires coming out here. Why there are so many wires is this happens to be one of their brushless products, so uh, it's quite a bit more complicated to drive a brushless motor. In fact, it requires a fair bit of sophistication uh, in the electronics to do that. What else can we see? This chunk of metal here, almost certainly a heat sink. Uh, we'll take that one off next, um, and then we'll see if we can attack the epoxy and get anything uh, useful out of the electronics. So metal heat sink now gone, unfortunately not really uh, showing much beyond that, uh, other than uh, some handwritten text here, I presume done by the assembly person. Uh, these epoxies, uh, let's see, the first thing to try for attacking is probably just boiling it in hot water and seeing if we can uh, loosen up the epoxy that way. Okay, so uh, partially de-encapsulated it, you can see a bit more of the electronics. Uh, the thing that's probably the most important component here is he uh, this item here. It's got some wider leads on this side here which drive out to the motor and then there's some finer leads here. Good indication this is the power electronics. Now I don't know how complicated it is, I don't know if there's a processor hiding in this package as well, but to generate these fields correctly it's relatively complicated. So we'll have to take this off uh, and uh, de-encapsulate it to learn a bit more. Uh, otherwise it's just a couple of electrolytics on this side, uh, a power sense resistor, a uh, small scattering of discretes on this side, not too interesting. Now it's a cordwood construction, so perhaps there's a processor hiding under this section here. We'll have to take that off. Um, uh, just just fell off. This was what's left of the uh, power switch. Uh, you can see it was gold plated for good service life. Um, and then this one's black because I suspect it's a resistive ink. So if you do want a speed control, there's a wiper that goes back and forth in this. And that's what's sort of left of the uh, the switch. It's was half sort of half torn apart there. Okay, let's uh, take this part off the board here, see what it is, and then perhaps keep on tearing it down, see if we can find that board under it. Uh, the uh, potting compound, uh, regrettably, for reverse engineering, uh, is certainly uh, standing in the way of analysis. Okay, here's the module that drives the motor. It's undoubtedly some sort of power transistors. It's marked FNH44004, and the mark above there is uh, Fairchild. Uh, Fairchild was bought by Onsemi a while back. No data sheet that I can find on the web, but the closest matches seem to strongly suggest it's a um, IGBT a driver of some sort. We'll have to uh, de-encapsulate this one to uh, sort down a bit further as to what we're looking at, but uh, undoubtedly a, a power module. Everything's indicating that it's unlikely to have a microprocessor on it, so that will be somewhere else on this assembly. Okay, uh, two circuit boards, I got them apart, I can uh, remove more of that uh, potting compound. Here's what I was expecting to find, a microprocessor. It's a PIC Micro from Microchip. It's uh, specialized, has a motor control and advanced analog, it says. It's a 33FJ32, uh, and uh, it's got uh, 32 kilobytes of flash, 2K bytes of uh, SRAM, so a very appropriate controller for a brushless motor. Uh, what else can we see? Uh, on this side here, uh, the assembly, you can see the resistor here. I, I've scraped away a bit of the covering. It's a very low value resistor. It's on the input voltage. I think this is for uh, current control. 
to make sure that you try not to deplete the battery too aggressively. A good sign of quality uh, on an assembly. This is where the uh, FETs were uh, sitting and then just right above the uh, microprocessor. On the other side here, not too much to be found to be honest. Um, Looks like there's probably a little voltage regulator which would be appropriate for that pick micro and otherwise just some discrete. So over here some input smoothing capacitors um, and uh, again on this side here much the same. Another perhaps voltage regulator, a small small regulating device and that's what we have. So at the core basically the design is this uh, Fairchild um, that uh, controller and we have the microchip. Uh, in the uh, next week's video I'll actually tear down the silicon to the uh, gate level when we take a look at those the photomicrographs. Uh, but for now it's kind of what you would expect uh, for a brushless controller, a, a microprocessor controlling a array of powerful FETs. Okay so this is the uh, DC motor, it's a brushless unit. Uh, if you look on the uh, side here, three wires, because uh, this is a three-phase motor. Uh, with a brushless design the, uh, the stator has the coils and the magnet it believes in the rotor, which is the reverse of what a uh, brushed motor would be. Uh, three wire, three phases, uh, basically a, a current is applied on one of the phases, it causes the coils to, to rotate the center a little bit, and then the next one is engaged, and the next one is engaged, and go around it goes. Uh, obviously the job for a microprocessor. Uh, the other thing about this um, brushless motor is it's got a uh, feedback control loop system. Uh, the loads of course on a uh, oscillating tool or any tool like a drill uh, require feedback because it, it's very variable. And what you see here is the board that's placed in the back of the motor. You can see three integrated circuits. Uh, I suspect strongly those are going to be Hall effect sensors. They sense the magnetic field and the coils so they can uh, tell the uh, motor to uh, run faster or slower by uh, changing the current on the coils. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a longer look at the semiconductors in next week's video. Uh, I expect they're going to be fairly interesting to look at. Um, and of course you might ask why a brushless motor? Well, uh, much better reliability since the brushes uh, vanish. Counterpoint of course, much more complexity, a lot more electronics. Um, in fact a lot of the secret sauce in these designs is actually the feedback uh, control loop uh, in the uh, product. Uh, the other advantage I understand is that you can get higher torque for any given volume with a brushless design, which is of course uh, highly desirable in, in this application. If you want to get some sense of what the drive signals look like on the motor, you can actually pick them up again just with an inductive loop on a scope probe, put it near the, the motor, and we can uh, then see what the magnetic fields look like because they get induced as an electric field onto this probe. Okay, so if I press the trigger what happens is you can start picking up the uh, each time it dries one of the phases, and then uh, if you press the trigger a bit harder so it runs a bit faster, you can you can see the period increases on the um, coils, basically it's trying to drive each coil a bit harder and of course the motor goes faster as long as the load doesn't change. You, you can see a lot of noise here because I I'm, I'm, have the scope at a very uh, uh, sensitive setting. So it looks quite noisy because basically you catch one phase but not all, but if we do a single step here we should be able to get a, a good uh, signal. There, and what I've done is I just did a single sweep. So you see one phase here, then probably the other two here, uh, repeating patterns that drives each of the phases. So from this, actually, you can connect this um, back into the control loop theory of how this uh, product's working, put an impulse load on it, and uh, you, can, you can see how well they've designed that feedback loop. So uh, you can uh, get a lot of secrets out of the uh, software, actually, if you want to really start diving deep here. Well, there we go. Uh, the disappointing end of a multi-tool didn't last very long, unfortunately, for me. The connector looks like was the downfall, and I think it's probably a manufacturing problem. The connector itself isn't bent on the pins here, it just seems to have had a fracture on the um, contact. I don't know if there was an inclusion in the copper or something, but uh, unfortunately this broke free and uh, this became scrap. So that's the end of that one. Join me next week uh, while I take the semiconductors apart and we'll study the semiconductor dies. They're actually pretty, going to be pretty fascinating on this assembly. The case itself is unremarkable in the sense that it's quite good quality. It's glass reinforced uh, plastic. It's got nice plastic over molding. Uh, typical of what you'd expect of a DeWalt quality. Interesting, the anti theft uh, tag is actually installed in the factory right on the actual tool. I presume these do, do have a high uh, theft rate, unfortunately, in the store. So it looks like they do uh, theft prevention right at the factory. It's such a common problem. Just a shame.